Hi, I'm Tracy, VE3TWM. Thank you for tuning in to Outdoors on the Air. Today I am pleased to share with you a look at a new antenna from the guys at High End Company in Holland. Ron and Rob set out to create an 80 meter through 10 meter end fed that is sturdy enough to withstand multiple field deployments while providing excellent performance without the need for a tuner. Before launching into the details of this antenna, I asked Ron about what factors go into designing an antenna for portable operations. Here is the list he gave me. A much smaller housing for the matching unit and a smaller frequency compensation coil. These two features make the antenna much easier to carry. Moving down the list, the resonant frequency is adjustable at 80 meters. Also contributing to making the unit compact for travel is that the radiator is easy to disconnect from the matching unit. Finally, the strain relief is not mounted on the matching unit, so there is no physical stress on the small box. Okay, now on to the field day antenna. This new antenna sells for 183 US dollars. As has been the case with every single high-end fed antenna I have used, the workmanship is top-notch. This is gear that is engineered to survive harsh conditions. Notice the small size of the matching unit. Although the matching unit is small, this antenna is rated at 100 watts maximum. As is the case for all antennas, an antenna rating of 100 watts typically refers to use in the SSB modes. You should reduce power to 35 watts or less when running CW or digital modes to avoid damaging the matching unit. The enclosure is made of ABS IP65, so it's tough and weather resistant. For the record, IP65 is defined as dust tight and protected against water projected from a nozzle. The radiator end of the matching unit has a waterproof screw on jack. Adjacent to this jack is a key ring strain relief point. A matching plug is found on the radiator. Here is the suggested method for secure mounting of the matching unit. The antenna itself is a length of 40 meters, about 120 feet. This is quite a long wire, so you'll need some space at your deployment location to properly erect it. Further on along the wire, we see a small white plastic receptacle. This is where you will attach the appropriate jumper for the section of the 80 meter band you prefer. Since 80 meters is quite a large band, the antenna cannot be resonant across its entire breadth. Adding in the appropriate jumper will bring your favorite section of the band into resonance. Jumpers are provided for 3.5, 3.7, and 3.9 MHz. Finally, toward the far end of the radiator, we have a small device that looks an awful lot like a loading coil. Ron refers to this as a frequency compensation coil. Its function is to ensure the antenna is resonant on the 17 meter through 10 meter bands. The coil has no effect on 40 meters and 80 meters. We've taken a look at the physical antenna itself, so let's review the specifications in regard to band coverage. The high end fed field day antenna covers eight bands. 2 to 1 standing wave ratio band-wide resonant coverage without the need of a tuner is provided on 40, 17, 15, and 12 meters. On 80 meters, the antenna is resonant on a user-selectable 200 kilohertz slice. The included 80 meter jumpers allow the user to set the band coverage most suitable for the deployment. Your choices when setting up are 3.5, 3.7 and 3.9 megahertz. Let me add a caveat on the jumpers. When I set this antenna up for my field day 2019 activity, I mistakenly erected the antenna without inserting either of the jumpers. When I went to check the standing wave ratio, it was too high on all bands. Recognizing my error, I brought down the antenna, installed the 3.9 megahertz jumper, raised the antenna again, 
and all SWRs fell into the published specs. You can expect the antenna to be resonant on 700 kilohertz of 10 meters. While the high-end fed field day antenna is not resonant on 30 meters, you can work this band with a tuner. Now that we've got a good overview on the sky wire, let's see how it performs in the field. Earlier this summer, I pressed it into service during the 2019 field day event. If you want to see how my field day went, be sure to check out the video I posted chronicling it. Let's take a look at a few contacts I made with the high-end fed field day antenna in a compromise installation. Victor Echo 3, Tango Whiskey Mike. Uh, Tango Whiskey Mike, come again. Victor Echo 3, Tango Whiskey Mike. Victor Echo 3, Tango Whiskey Mike, we are 2 Alpha Michigan, QSL. Roger, 1 Bravo, Golf Tango Alpha. 1 Bravo, GTA, thanks for that, good luck, 7-3. Thank you, good luck. Thank you, Field Day, November 8, Lima, Charlie. Georgia, Field Day, Kilo 4, Bravo, Fox, Tango. Victor Echo 3, Tango, Whiskey, Mike. Okay, I got Victor Echo 3, Tango, Whiskey, Mike. Please copy, 4 Alpha, Alabama, 4 Alpha, Alpha, Lima, over. Roger, 1 Bravo, Golf, Tango, Alpha. I got your 1 Bravo, Golf, Tango, Echo, Golf, Tango, Alpha, thank you very much. George from Kilo 4, Bravo, Fox, Rock, Tango. Victor Echo 3, Tango, Whiskey, Mike. Stand by. Victor Echo 3, Tango, Whiskey, Mike. 3 Alpha, Whiskey, Mike, Alpha. Roger, copy. 1 Bravo, Golf Tango, Alpha. Thank you, good luck. I mentioned that for my field day deployment, the antenna was erected in a compromised manner. Due to space constraints at the campsite, I had to install the antenna as an inverted V with the apex at about 30 feet. There was an angle of about 90 degrees at the V. According to Ron at the high-end company, for best results, the antenna should be deployed not as an inverted V, but in a straight line, either as a sloper or in a horizontal configuration. If you really need to install the antenna as an inverted V, the preferred apex angle should be no less than 120 degrees. I will publish a follow-up video in the near future showing how the antenna performs when properly deployed. In that video, I will also show you how to use a line isolator and a coaxial counterpoise to maximize performance of all high-end fed antennas. But for now, I will report the high-end fed field day antenna helped me make many contacts during my abbreviated field day activation and a parks on the air activation later that same day. The field day antenna will now become my go-to antenna for portable operations where I have access to enough real estate to deploy it properly. It's a tremendous addition to the line of high quality, great performing antennas offered by high-end company. I'd like to thank Ron for sending me the field day antenna to test. I'd also like to thank all of you for the support you have given my channel. Now it's your turn. Get out of the shack, get outdoors, and get on the air. 73 from Tracy, VE3TWM.